Greetings from my private Magnavox Museum collection. What you see before you is the 1967 Magnavox Imperial Astrosonic. This was the top of the line of the day. As a matter of fact, it was almost a secret model because regular dealers couldn't handle it. They had to sign a special franchise and a separate display agreement to even sell this model. So many people never knew of it. The standard brochure did not include it. It's a very special model and it's the finest mid-century modern classic Magnavox ever made. When I say classic Magnavox, what I'm referring to is the fact that the sound emanates from the side of the cabinet and the front. Two exponential horns in the front and two 15-inch base woofers with enormous magnet structures on the side and the sliding lids. This is the last top-of-the-line Imperial series to feature the sliding lids and also the last to have the acoustical tunnel which we'll talk about in a moment. The speakers are very special. Here is a 1965 Magnavox speaker display and it shows you the different speakers available in their models. This is where a lot of manufacturers save money because one of the chief components of the speaker of course is the magnet and the lighter the magnet the less expensive it is to make the speaker. You'll note that on the right the magnet structure is massive. Between the right and left channel, these 15-inch base woofers have 7 pounds of magnet weight. There are very fine Magnavox models that use the high-efficiency 15-inch base speaker, which has a 10-ounce magnet weight. And even the Magnavox 12-inch has a larger, Magnavox, uh, larger magnet structure, <laughs> excuse me, than many 15-inch, if they even use them, in other makes. Also different in this model is the horn. On the right is the exponential horn that other Magnavox Astrosonics featured. Astrosonics are the best series of radio phonographs that Magnavox produced at the time. But you'll see that the one on the left was used exclusively in 1967 in the Imperial line and four of these have the acoustical efficiency of 40 cone speakers. The one on the left is a, has a 600 cycle crossover point. The one on the right has a thousand crossover point. So because the one on the left has lower cycle duty it's a larger unit. Moving along to the set you'll see buttons for power tuning and also loudness control. You have stepped loudness control from loud, medium to soft and another position for off. And this coincides with the remote control that is supplied with the unit. Nice thing about this is you never need batteries. It's very clever. It's pneumatic. As you press the button, there's a bellows that develops air pressure and it goes through a little whistle, much like a dog whistle, to make a high frequency sound that the set will understand through a microphone mounted in the lower right behind the speaker grill. Also distinguishing the finer Magnavox models are separate bass and treble controls that are stepped like a studio control. Many tone controls of the era when you adjust bass you lose treble and when you adjust treble you lose bass. That shouldn't happen. You should be adjusting those tonal frequencies separately and independently. So Magnavox device step controls. Every time you strip, step the bass you control only the bass and every time you step the treble you control only the treble. As a final adjustment on tone they provide a timber control. The more you turn to the right the more the higher frequencies are accentuated. This is the changer that Magnavox 
made in their own factory in England and it is arguably the finest record changer ever made because it has many features that no other changer had at any price at least when you consider them in totality it has a synchronous motor that locks into the frequency of the current and not the voltage so if you have a voltage drop your speed doesn't drop other fine changers had that too but what makes this really different is that the tone arm is clutched and if any arm or little kid's hand gets in the way while that's trying to change records it won't jam the clutch will maintain the mechanism without any damage also you'll notice that there is no control for the size of record that's because the tone arm will come up and measure the record before it plays it this first video is really part one of three parts Part 1 is just going to discuss the set in general and give you some Magnavox background. Part 2 will be a demonstration of the overall unit. And Part 3 will demonstrate the tape deck recording. So moving to the left, that tape deck is a built-in unit. Not all of them included it. It was an option. This is a top-of-the-line unit with the option. By the way, this retailed for $1,095 in 1967. That is the same as $9,800 today. So if this unit were made today in today's dollars, it would cost, with tax, a little over $10,000. It probably weighs between 250 and 300 pounds. And when you look a little bit as we will in a moment at the brochure, you'll understand why it weighs so much. A little background might be interesting to those of you who are Magnavox aficionados. It would pay to get a copy of the February 1964 Fortune magazine. This is a reprint. And of course, you know, I collect Magnavox, so you expect me to say wonderful things about Magnavox. But for a very uh, highly regarded and impartial third-party analysis of Magnavox, this is a good reprint to get, or the original magazine. This one was reprinted solely for the information of Magnavox organization, but I have several copies of the original magazine as well. But it, the title is, says it all. Magnavox goes its own golden way. And it talks about the fact that the company has an unusually high regard for quality and an unusual way of going to market. There were no distributors for Magnavox. Zenith, RCA, Sylvania, really any other brand I can think of in this category was sold through distributors. The factory didn't want to deal with all the dealers. They just let a distributor sell to whoever they wanted to. Magnavox was afraid that their products would end up in the hands of dealers who are not well qualified to extol all the virtues of the set. So Magnavox picked its own dealers, and at the time, they were the better music stores. Typically, they sold pianos, musical instruments, records, those stores. The better department stores, and the better furniture and appliance stores. That was Magnavox's distribution, which was far less than any other major manufacturer, and yet, they sold more stereo than any other maker in the world, and it's the quality of the set that did it. But the quality wasn't an accident. The quality had a real accounting basis to it, if you will. If there's no distributor, and there's no distributor making a profit, what happens to that money? Well, it gets shared. I don't know that it was this scientific, but let's just say that roughly a third of it went to Magnavox because they were a very profitable company and a third of it went to the dealer as an incentive to handle Magnavox, and a third of it went to the customer, so they were insured of getting more for their dollar. It was a brilliant system, and the man who devised it is right here, Frank Fryman. Frank Fryman had a love of music. He lived in Fort Wayne for many years. He was very involved with the orchestra in that town, very well known. There's a Fryman Square to this day, in Fort Wayne that honors him and his contributions to that city. 
But he's the one who envisioned the distribution policy I just talked about. And he's also the one who took an active role because he, he himself had a true engineering background, self-taught, but he knew what an engineer could do and what an engineer couldn't do. And as a matter of fact, this set has a patent that Mr. Fryman's name is on. So let's go to that for a moment because I am going to list this set on eBay. I don't sell too much out of the museum, but I am going to part with this one only because I have several others in this class and uh, they do take some room. It's about 72 inches wide. So I'm going to make a little room and I'm going to let this one go. It's a very fine example. And as a matter of fact, it's been fully serviced by a Magnavox expert. Both myself and a good friend, the changer has been gone through and serviced. Uh, all the circuitry has been examined. Connections have been cleaned. Capacitors where needed have been replaced. And all of this will be detailed in a very comprehensive eBay listing that will be done very soon. Certainly by the 15th of December, probably a bit early, 2022. Now here's a booklet that I'm going to include with the set that probably nobody else could provide because I've been very fortunate to assemble what could be the most comprehensive library of Magnavox uh, extant. Uh, the Magnavox company, who I worked for for 30 years, was very generous with me and I got a lot of documents from them. And also people who worked at the company who knew I uh, liked to collect these things and then just my own personal searches. So from all these materials, I have assembled for the new owner of this magnificent Magnavox a binder of materials. And first we start out with a nice view, of course, of this model. Sorry for the reflections. They are really bad today. Let's see. Anyway, maybe I'll get on top of it a little bit. That's a bad technical spot there. Sorry, everybody. But let's take a look at it this way. So then you have a cover page. And there's also an owner's manual that's included. An original brochure. And as you go through the original brochure pages, you can see all the radio functions explained. The step treble, step bass, timber control. And separate tuner. Separate amp the amplifier is so big at 150 watts music power that it's mounted on the uh, uh, on the back of the acoustical tunnel, the changer, the remote control, the four exponential horns, the two massive woofers, and best of all, the acoustical tunnel. This is what Mr. Fryman patented with another engineer. And what it does is it effectively doubles the speaker enclosure size for each channel. To get terrific bass response, you need three things. Enclosure size, magnet weight, and power. The set has more than ample power, more than ample magnet weight, and more than ample enclosure size. Because, like I said, if you can imagine, the right-hand channel is expanded to this size and the left channel is expanded to that size so it effectively almost doubles the cubic inch capacity of each channel they also were careful to have a little different part number for the woofers because the resonant frequency of them by being different will prevent them from interfering with each other the sound spreads in a very impressive manner. This museum room is pretty good sized. I had the pleasure of working for Magnavox and Philips for 30 years. And I also collect Philips equipment. And just as Ford made the GT to prove their engineering expertise and that they could still win races, Philips, when they developed a compact disc, wanted to make a statement and loudspeakers. Maybe someday I'll make a video on them, but they had a very advanced design that they came up with in 1989 
that involves a mid-range ribbon speaker, which very few speakers ever have. Mid-range tweeter is uh, very common, but not a ribbon mid-range. And then two woofers, a low frequency woofer and a high frequency woofer, and the whole thing in the column speaker, a pair of them in today's money, would be about $10,000 like this Magnavox. And the sound quality, of course, is fantastic, very accurate, but I will tell you something. You have to sit at one special spot to hear them at their best. They cannot fill a room like this Magnavox. So to continue with the booklet, the owner will also get, and this is all detailed in the listing, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm someday I'm going to have to find a way to uh, really professionally do these uh, videos. So my apologies. But there is a sheet on this model, service manual, and then included will also be how to service the changer. Very extensive. The amplifier. The tuner. And finally, the tape unit. Tape unit is quite a few pages in and of itself. There's quite a bit involved. Also, I've installed some things to update it. It has Bluetooth. So you'll be able to play music from your Bluetooth source. A lot of people use their phone. When you turn the unit on, it will instantly turn on the Bluetooth. And because it's such a special piece that you may want to accent in your home, accent lights come on in the back. You can change the color of them, you can make them strobe if you want, you can turn them off if you want, but that's a set of LED lights that's mounted to the back. If you don't want it, you can cut it off too, of course. But all of this is integrated in such a way that the only plug that you need to plug in the wall is the original AC line cord that Magnavox provided. Everything's wired internally. Your Bluetooth, your accent lights, and to make sure that you can enjoy your tape unit along with the Bluetooth, there's a switcher. Number one will allow you to listen to Bluetooth. Number two will allow you to play the tape deck. So thank you for your patience with um, a lot of little technical glitches here. But this gives you a little background on this set. What a special set it was in its time. How expensive it was about ten thousand dollars in today's money why it's such a special magnavox and particularly why this as the last and greatest mid-century modern set has a place that a lot of people probably will appreciate as they look back at that mid-century modern era the Mad Men era uh, with affection and nostalgia so this is part one I'm going to conclude this Part two will be a demonstration and not so much yakking for me and cam camera spilling and all of that. And then number three will be a demonstration of the tape deck. So I appreciate your patience and I'll see you in part two.